let's take a look at unwelcome behaviors in terms of harassment claims. Individuals can view the same situations very differently. Verbal and physical conduct that would otherwise constitute egregious harassment might be entirely welcomed and engaged by two employees who are in a relationship or who are just friends that routinely tease each other. Although the principal focus in harassment cases is the objective existence of harassment viewed through the eyes of a reasonable person, plaintiffs also must show they subjectively perceive their treatment is unwelcome. Harassing conduct is unwelcome when the person complaining of the conduct did not solicit or provoke it and that person regarded the conduct as offensive and unwanted at the time that it occurred. A circumstance that can cause the unwelcomeness of conduct to be questioned is when an employee fails to tell the harasser or the employer that the conduct is offensive or waits a long time before reporting it. Victims of harassment are not always required to confront their harassers. Sometimes they're well advised not to do so. Nor must they always report harassment to their employer to establish that the conduct is unwelcome. Some indication of unwelcomeness, even if nonverbal, however, is important to the plaintiff's case. Another problematic situation occurs when a prior romantic relationship goes sour and a party that no longer desires to maintain the relationship continues to be pursued by the other party. It is particularly important in these cases that the person who no longer desires romantic attention clearly notify the person of this and act accordingly. Employers seeking to defend harassment claims also sometimes argue that any harassment was not unwelcome because the victim provoked or actively participated in the harassment. An employee's own salty language, flirting, pranks, and even sexually provocative appearance can provide indications that the individual was an active participant in rather than a victim of harassment. What about men who are harassed by women? It is often assumed that men, at least heterosexuals, are more likely to welcome such attention than women. An employee's voluntary or consensual participation in sexual activity is not necessarily fatal to the harassment claim. The core requirement of any sexual harassment claim is that the alleged sexual advances were unwelcome. Welcomeness and voluntariness are distinct matters.